delving into the heart of Florence's most ambitious architectural endeavor. Florence, in the heart of Tuscany, buzzed with a vibrant energy in the late 13th century. The streets were alive with merchants, artists and scholars, all contributing to the city's dynamic atmosphere. This was a city on the rise, a center of trade and culture. Florence was becoming a beacon of prosperity, attracting talent and wealth from all corners of Europe. Determined to showcase their newfound prosperity, the Florentines embarked on an ambitious project, a new cathedral that would surpass all others in grandeur. This cathedral was not just a building, it was a statement of Florence's place in the world. The Duomo, as it was known, was designed to be unlike anything the world had ever seen. Its unique design was meant to inspire awe and admiration, reflecting the city's innovative spirit. It would be a symbol of Florence's piety, wealth and artistic brilliance. The cathedral was to be a testament to the city's devotion to God and its commitment to cultural excellence. The Florentines spared no expense using the finest materials and hiring the most skilled craftsmen. Artisans from across Europe were brought in to contribute their expertise, ensuring that every detail was perfect. Years turned into decades and the Duomo rose steadily skyward. The construction was a slow and meticulous process, with each stone laid with precision and care. The nave, with its soaring arches and intricate stained glass windows, was a marvel of Gothic architecture. These elements combined to create a space that was both grand and ethereal, drawing the eye upward toward the heavens. Yet, a daunting challenge remained, the dome. This was not just any dome, it was to be the largest and most impressive the world had ever seen. The Florentines had envisioned a dome of unprecedented size, a dome that would dwarf all others. This vision was bold and audacious, pushing the boundaries of what was thought possible in architecture. However, no one knew how to build such a massive structure without it collapsing under its own weight. The challenge was immense, requiring innovative solutions and new engineering techniques. The technology simply didn't exist. The builders were working with the tools and knowledge of their time, which were not sufficient to realize their grand vision. The dome's construction stalled, leaving a gaping hole in the cathedral's roof. This unfinished state was a stark reminder of the limitations they faced. The unfinished dome became a source of frustration and embarrassment for the Florentines. It was a constant reminder of their unfulfilled dream and the challenges that lay ahead. It seemed that their grand ambition might never be realized. The project that was meant to symbolize their greatness was now a symbol of their struggle. The challenge of the dome was not just an architectural one, it was a test of Florence's ingenuity and resolve. The city's leaders and builders were determined to find a solution no matter how difficult. The city's reputation, its pride, rested on finding a solution. The people of Florence knew that overcoming this challenge would cement their place in history as innovators and visionaries. The entire community came together, pooling their knowledge and resources. This spirit of collaboration and innovation was what made Florence unique and would ultimately lead to the solution they sought. And so the dream of Florence, though unfinished for many years, would eventually be realized. The completed dome would stand as a testament to the city's perseverance, creativity and unyielding spirit. Today, the Florence Cathedral, with its magnificent dome, is not just a landmark but a symbol of human achievement. It reminds us that even the most daunting challenges can be overcome with determination and ingenuity. The dome posed a seemingly insurmountable challenge. At 143 feet in diameter, it would be the largest dome in the world, dwarfing the Pantheon in Rome. Traditional methods relying on wooden scaffolding built from the ground up were simply not feasible. The dome's weight and the height at which it needed to be built rendered traditional techniques useless. There wasn't enough timber in Tuscany to erect scaffolding of that magnitude. Adding to the complexity, the dome had to be constructed over an already existing octagonal base, further limiting the options. This wasn't just about building big, it was about building smart. The solution lay not just in brute force, but in innovation, in finding a way to defy gravity and architectural norms. The Florentines held a competition, inviting architects and engineers from across Europe to propose solutions. Many came forward with ideas, but none seemed practical or feasible. Years passed and the dome remained unfinished, a constant reminder of the impossible task at hand. 
The city's dream seemed to be slipping away, the whispers of failure echoing through the unfinished cathedral. It was into this climate of uncertainty that Filippo Brunelleschi stepped forward. Florence was a city in need of innovation, a city yearning for a visionary to solve its architectural conundrum. Born in Florence in 1377, Brunelleschi was not an architect by training. His early life was steeped in the rich cultural and artistic traditions of the city, but his path was far from conventional. He had apprenticed as a goldsmith and clockmaker, displaying a keen eye for detail and a mastery of mechanics. These skills, though seemingly unrelated to architecture, would later prove invaluable. His journey to becoming the dome's saviour was an unlikely one, but his keen intellect and unwavering determination would prove to be exactly what Florence needed. Brunelleschi's mind was always at work, always seeking solutions to the most complex problems. Brunelleschi had spent years studying the ruins of ancient Rome. He was not just a casual observer, he meticulously analyzed their construction techniques, their use of materials and their engineering principles. He was captivated by the Romans' engineering prowess, their ability to create such monumental structures. The grandeur of the Colosseum, the elegance of the Pantheon, and the sheer ingenuity of Roman aqueducts left a lasting impression on him. He believed that their secrets, long lost, could hold the key to building the dome in Florence. Brunelleschi was convinced that by unlocking these ancient techniques, he could achieve what many deemed impossible. His travels had exposed him to Roman architectural techniques, particularly the use of arches, domes, and innovative building materials. He saw the potential in these methods to revolutionize contemporary architecture. Instead of relying on traditional scaffolding, Brunelleschi proposed a revolutionary idea, a self-supporting dome. This concept was groundbreaking, challenging the very foundations of architectural practice at the time. His plan was audacious, even heretical to some. Many of his contemporaries were skeptical, unable to fathom how such a structure could stand without the conventional support systems. He envisioned a dome within a dome, two shells connected by ribs, with each layer supporting the other during construction. This dual shell design was not only innovative, but also incredibly efficient, allowing for a lighter yet stronger structure. This intricate system of interlocking bricks and stone would distribute the weight evenly, eliminating the need for massive support structures. Brunelleschi's design was a testament to his genius, blending ancient wisdom with modern ingenuity to create a masterpiece that would stand the test of time. The result was nothing short of miraculous. The Dome of Florence Cathedral, with its majestic presence, became a symbol of human achievement and a beacon of Renaissance innovation. Brunelleschi's unlikely path to architectural glory was a journey of relentless pursuit, unwavering vision and unparalleled creativity. Today, Brunelleschi is celebrated not just as an architect, but as a pioneer who dared to dream beyond the conventional, forever changing the skyline of Florence and the course of architectural history. Brunelleschi's plan was met with skepticism and resistance. Many in Florence doubted his ambitious vision, questioning whether it was even possible to construct such a grand dome without the use of traditional scaffolding. The idea seemed preposterous to them, a gamble that could end in disaster. Many doubted that a dome could be built without traditional scaffolding. The conventional wisdom of the time dictated that scaffolding was essential for supporting the structure during construction. Without it, they feared the dome would collapse under its own weight before it was complete. But Brunelleschi was undeterred. He had a vision and a deep understanding of architectural principles that gave him confidence. He was determined to prove his doubters wrong and to create something that would stand the test of time. He'd carefully calculated the stresses and strains, drawing upon his knowledge of geometry and engineering. Brunelleschi's understanding of these principles was ahead of his time, allowing him to foresee and mitigate potential issues that others couldn't even comprehend. He argued passionately for his vision, countering doubts with meticulous plans and scale models. These models were not just simple representations, they were detailed and precise, showcasing his innovative approach and the feasibility of his design. To build his dome, Brunelleschi devised a series of ingenious machines and techniques. These inventions were revolutionary, designed specifically to address the unique challenges posed by his ambitious project. He invented a new type of hoist powered by oxen to lift the heavy materials to unprecedented heights. 
This hoist was a marvel of engineering, capable of moving massive stones and other materials with remarkable efficiency. He employed a herringbone bricklaying pattern inspired by Roman techniques, which added strength and stability to the dome structure. This pattern was crucial in ensuring that the dome could support itself as it rose higher and higher. This pattern, rarely used since Roman times, interlocked the bricks, creating a self-supporting structure as the dome curved inward. The interlocking bricks distributed the weight evenly, preventing any single point from bearing too much stress. He also understood that he wasn't just building a structure, he was managing a massive workforce. The scale of the project required not only architectural genius, but also exceptional organizational skills. He devised innovative systems for organizing the laborers, ensuring that each brick was laid with precision and speed. These systems were essential for maintaining the quality and pace of construction, allowing the project to progress smoothly. He motivated his team with a combination of strict discipline and inspiring leadership, turning ordinary laborers into skilled craftsmen. His ability to inspire and lead was as crucial to the project's success as his architectural innovations. Brunelleschi's leadership ensured that every member of his team was committed to the vision and worked tirelessly to bring it to life. The result was a breathtaking dome that still dominates the Florence skyline today. It stands as a testament to Brunelleschi's genius, determination and innovative spirit. His work not only transformed the architectural landscape of Florence, but also set new standards for engineering and construction that would influence generations to come. Modern engineers and architects continue to draw inspiration from Brunelleschi's methods and vision. His ability to think outside the box and challenge conventional wisdom serves as a powerful reminder of what can be achieved with creativity, knowledge and unwavering determination. Brunelleschi's legacy is one of innovation and excellence. His dome remains a marvel of engineering and a symbol of what is possible when one dares to dream big and defy the odds. His story is a timeless inspiration for all who seek to push the boundaries of what is possible.